welcome back for the third lecture of this week. So, in the last lecture we had defined what is the notion of our transition based passing and we, we saw what are the configuration that I should I should have, what are the transitions I can take and how do I come up with a final dependency graph. And we took an example and showed what are the transitions you can take and, and how you should be taking the transitions. And then we ended with, with saying that how I will be using that for getting parts for a new sentence. Okay. So, this is something that we had uh, initially asked. So, I have some sentence s, yes I can find out what initial configuration is y the function. I keep on taking some transitions go to some intermediate configuration until I obtain terminal configuration. And I said with the data I will have some sentences and their corresponding dependency passage. And from there I will try to learn what are the operations or transitions I am going to take. Now, in this lecture we will see for our particular problem how we will be doing the learning part. So, again let me start by giving you the basic intuition. So, what will be the basic intuition? So, in the last lecture you have learned that for a sentence if you know the it is dependency graph. So, this is my label data if you know that you can run through the steps very very easily the steps of transitions. So, you can say that this is my initial configuration and you can find out what is the transition I should take say this shift. So, you can store somewhere this is my initial configuration C 0 and this is the transition. Then by taking this transition you will go to some other configuration C 1 what is the transition it may be left arc ok. Again some C 2 it can be shift and so on ok some C m and it can be shift or something. So, this given a sentence you can easily run through these steps and find out and what is a C i? C i is nothing but a some words in a stack, some words in buffer and something in my arc that is my C. So, that means, suppose I am given a set of sentences and their dependency graph. I can store all the possible set of configuration and all the possible by all the possible I mean whatever I am obtaining from these sentences and their corresponding transitions ok. And this I can have a last set. So, I will have a set of all possible C i and that optimal transition that I should be taking and C i is of this form something in stack something in buffer something in arc. Now, what is my problem at run time? At run time I am given a sentence s I do not know its dependency parts ok. So, I start my transition I convert that to some initial configuration C 0 that is easy you have the function of converting to initial configuration. There I have to find out what is the, the transition I should take. Now, what will be the idea? I will try to use this set of uh, data that I have. I know for what configurations, what transitions were taken in my gold standard or in my uh, set of labeled data set. So, I will try to find out. So, before going into what this is a machine learning uh, approach we will use. So, what will be the intuitive idea? Try to find out what are the closest configurations in this set and for those closest configurations what transition was taken and I will try to use that T star from there. Suppose I find out that T star is the transition that was taken to the closest configuration here. So, I will use T star and once I know this T star I can transit to the next one C 1. Again the question will come what is the transition I should take. So, I will again go back to this and choose T dash 
take this go to C 2 keep on doing that until you come up with the final configuration C m and that is why you say this is the dependency graph for s and this is the entity idea. In the last lecture we have seen how to come up with this set and today we will see how do I how, how, how do I approach this problem so that I can come up with this function that what is the closest configuration from here to here what is the transition that I should be taking. So, so one important idea that we had already discussed earlier in this course is that for example, how do you find out the closest configuration and what is the transition that they are taking. This you have to use by using a some sort of classifier that is you are trying to classify for a given configuration among all the four transitions which transition will be taken. So, you are treating as a four class classification problem at each point you are trying to classify among one of the four classes and how are you going to classify you have to convert your input data in some representation. So, this will be using some feature representation. So, you will have to convert your configuration into some sort of features feature vector and for those features you have to learn the weights and this weights you have to learn by the training example again. And once you have learned the optimal weights you can find out what is the transition at at any given point and this is what we will be discussing in this lecture. So, let us see. So, now we are talking about the data driven deterministic passing. So, so, I have written here certain things like deterministic passing requires an oracle. What do you mean by oracle? So, oracle is nothing but the set of configurations and the set of transition that I took. Okay. So, this you have already seen in the last lecture how do you find out configuration and transitions. Now, what we are going to do we want to approximate it by a classifier. So, we will be learning a classifier from there and it will be trained using the tree bank data. So, whatever data we have in the gold standard label data we will use that to train our classifier also. So, we will use the label data for two different tasks first for building the uh, oracle configuration transition configuration transition second to learn the weights of my classifier. Now, what is the learning for problem? Now, as we said we will be given a configuration as input and we want to find out what is the transition I should be taking at a particular configuration. So, ideally I want to approximate a function that takes a configuration which is represented by feature vectors to transition. So, configuration to transition where configuration is nothing but a, a feature vector form and because otherwise how do you compare between two configurations. So, that is why you will take give it a very abstract representation in terms of uh, some feature vector form and you will learn a function from feature vector to the optimal transition and this is this will be your classifier. And how will you learn that you will be given a training set of gold standard transition sequences that we already have seen. So, now to completely solve this problem or to completely understand this problem there are three issues that you need to understand. First is how do I represent configuration by a feature vector. Second how do I derive training data from my tree banks and third is how do I learn my classifiers. So, let us try to uh, answer each of these three questions. So, how do I represent configuration by, by feature vectors and this is something that we had done earlier in the class that how do I convert a, a given state or representation to a feature vector. So, what is my configuration? My configuration is nothing but stack buffer and arcs and I want to convert that to some feature vector and feature vector again here we will take it a very simple form like f c t it is a function over 
the configuration and the transition. And we will try to define features independent of transition. So, each feature that we define can have four copies for four different transitions. So, F C T 1, F C T 2, F C T 3, F C T 4. Right. So, so, what are the different things that I can use in feature? So, I can use things like what is the word at top of a stack, what is the word at top of buffer, they are very important. What is the word here? Then I may want to use what is the part of speech stack of these words, because sometimes some relations might might directly depend on whether it is a verb and it is a noun. Then they might be a relation, otherwise not. So I might use the part part of speech stack. I might go to the lemma. I might want to use what is the distance between this word and this word in the actual sentence. I might also want to use what are the neighbors here. I might want to use what are the relations that have already been established with this word or this word. Okay. So, that means I will define certain conditions over a stack, buffer, and arcs, and that will attach my features. And again, these can be some binary questions that I am asking. So, that is, is the distance between these two words between 2 to 5, yes or no. Okay. So, like that this can be my condition that is my features and I will define it for all the four transitions. So, let us look at what are the different feature models we can take in general. So, I am representing a configuration C by a vector of simple features. So, like I can use the nodes. So, what is the top of a stack? What is the head of buffer? I can use the linear context that is what are the neighbors in a stack of the top word what are the neighbors in buffer of the top word. Then I might also use what are the parents, children, sibling depending on what relations have already been established in my set of arcs. Then I can go to some other attributes like I can use the word form, I can use also its lemma and we can use the power to speech tag and various other features. For example, is the, is the word on top of a stack ends with e d or i n g things like that and I might be able to use the dependency type if I am handling a labeled dependency problem. So, so yeah just a word what do I mean by labeled dependency problem that means I also want to find out for two words what is the dependency relation label. And if I am solving an unlabeled problem that means I just want to establish a relation, but I am not concerned with the actual dependency type. So, I am not worried about putting the label on the arc, but just the structure of the tree. So, if I am solving a labeled problem. I might also have to see what is the relation type that I am establishing. And we will also see the distance between different tokens as one of the features. So, these are some typical examples, but it does not mean that you are limited only to using this set of features. And as I keep on saying, so for your particular task, you might have to think what might be some interesting features that you, you can use. So, by using all these features or putting them as binary equations, I can represent my configuration as a in terms of a feature representation. So, this is my first question. Now, what was the second question? Now, how do I use this at runtime or to actually find the uh, pass of a sentence? Idea would be something like that. So, let me start from here. At runtime, you are given a sentence w 1 to w n okay. and you can always go to the initial configuration where the buffer is sorry stack is empty, buffer contains all the words and arcs is empty. Okay. Now, this is your configuration and you are in a loop while the buffer is not empty, you keep on taking some transitions. Now, this is the task. So, at runtime so, this configuration C, you know how to convert to the to a feature vector because you have defined your features. So, you can ask the questions at this point and find out your vector F C T. Now, what is my classifier? My classifier is simple. I have learned the weights of my features, assume that I have learned, we will see how to learn the weights. So, once I have learned the weights of my features, 
I will multiply the weights with F C T and find out what is the particular transition that is giving the maximum value. That means, I know what is my F C T feature vector and I know my this is my F C T and this is my weights. So, now at run time I am given a configuration C and I need to find out what is the optimal transition. How do I do that? An idea is that I will multiply W with F C T i for all the four transitions. So, T i is shift, left arc, reduce and right arc and I will take which one gives the maximum value arg max over T i. So, at run time any configuration I can convert to F C T very easily. I will already have the weight vectors the only thing I have to do multiply weight vector with the feature vector find out four different values for four different transitions choose the maximum or choose the transition that has gives the maximum value that is the transition you will take and then if you go back this is the transition you take and then apply this transition over this configuration to find the next configuration and keep on going in this loop until your buffer is empty and this is what you do at run time. Now, what is not clear to you right now is how do we learn these weights right everything else is clear. So, let us see. So, for learning weights we will have to use the label data that we have this is the training data. Now, let us see what are the steps that we need to do over the training data. Now, training data I will have the instances of this form f c and t this is clear in training data we will have configurations and transitions yes and configuration I know what is the feature representation. So, I convert it to feature vector. So, I can have f c and t f c is nothing but the feature representation of the configuration c and t is the correct transition out of uh, starting from c and this I can for obtain from my oracle remember in oracle I, I had my configuration and the optimal transition. So, I know this configuration what is the transition it should take. So, from there I go to next step f c and t ok. Now, now this is something that we have done in the last class, but let me try to repeat that again that how do we sample this oracle function from the set of labeled uh, sentences labeled with dependency graph. So, for each sentence x with the Golishan dependency graph g x you have to consider transition sequence right like we did in the last class for the example he sent her a letter such that c 0 is something that you will obtain by applying the initialization function on, on x and this is the final dependency graph ok. Now, for each intermediate configuration we will construct a training instance. So, right we will have c i t i c i t i and c i will go to f c i and this is the condition for how are am I moving in from one configuration to another configuration. This is the same thing that, that I had discussed earlier in today's lecture that what is the idea is starting from the gold standard sentence and dependency graph find out this sequence c i t i c i t i. Now, the only addition here is I convert each c i to its feature representation. So, that is why I what I have I have f c i t i f c i t i and how do you sample uh, the transitions in oracle this is something again that we did in the last class. So, if you see that in my dependency graph the current top of the word in stack is connected to the top of the word in buffer. So, you will have a relation depending on the direction it will be left arc or right arc. So, here if the top of the word in buffer is the head and this is the dependent you make a left arc transition. So, this is what you will store. If top word in the in the stack is head then you will have a right arc relation yes. Then how do you choose between reduce and shift if there is a word below the top of the stack such that it is connected to the first word in the buffer then you do reduce otherwise you shift. And remember this is the rule of thumb that we discussed in the last lecture if you have to choose between reduce and shift this is the condition that you can use. 
so okay so so i hope the the idea is clear you are starting with the sentence in training data you have the the gold standard dependency graph you keep on going through your transitions and you store it somewhere fci ti fci ti fci ti now how do i use that to learn the weights now and this is the idea of learning the weights uh, so so what you will do you will start with some initial set of weights so so here i have said all the weights can be initialized to 0 but probably not with 0 you can initialize it with some other number say uh, some initial random numbers or some uniform numbers you can initialize your weights with that. now what are you going to do so there are two loops here for i is 1 to k this is the number of iterations that you are doing for j in 1 to n 1 to n is the all the set of sentences that you have in your training data so you are doing multiple iterations over your training data in each iteration what do you do you take the sentence yes you get the initial configuration fine now while buffer is not empty so so what you are doing right now you are again repeating the same stuff over each sentence in the training data okay you start with the initial configuration and now try to find the transition as per your current weights so so that's where the idea of learning comes in so let me try to explain it here so so you have a sentence s yes now you can apply the cs x function or and you go to initial configuration cd now you have to take a transition to go to c1 now this is your sentence in your training data that means you know what is the transition you should take yes but i want to use this idea to learn and how do i do that now suppose that you are actually at the run time at testing time so then you do not know the transition so you will convert that to some feature vector f c t okay now at run time how do you find out the optimal transition multiply it with the weights and take the argmax and let us say this is t star yes you can do that even if it is in the training set and let us call it t not optimal transition now what is the idea you are still in the learning phase so your weights will not be optimal so when you do this operation you may not get the optimal transition you may you may get something else and that's where you will try to adapt your weights so you will say if t star not equal to t0 then you update your weights and how will you update the weights such that you go in the direction of the actual transition and away from the direction of the the transition that you obtain at the current point so a simple thing is w new would be w old plus fc t0 minus fc t star so going in the direction of the optimal transition and away from the transition that you are currently uh, predicting and there can be some learning rates and all that we are not uh, discussing right now so there will be some learning rates by which you will do this update so you will have now new weights again you keep on doing it for c1 c1 you know what is the transition optimal transition but you will find out argmax t star match with this if they are not the same you will again update your weights so you'll keep keep on doing that for all the sentences s1 to sn in your training set and you will do it 1 2 k times until the weights are converging so once the weights converge you stop so this is what we have shown here so we start for each sentence you have some initial configuration while buffer is not empty so keep on doing the stuff find out what is the optimal transition as per your 
weights find the optimal transition from the oracle if they are not matching update your weights but you take the correct transition so the next time you are starting with the correct configuration keep on repeating it and finally you will end up with your set of weights okay. so now to further understand that let us take a an example and that will make it clear to you that how the learning or how the weight updation takes place so so this is a, a simple example so i have a sentence johns or mary so what you need to do first question is draw a dependency graph of the sentence that is very easy yes now the next question says that you are using the data driven dependency parsing the same method that we have discussed in in this lecture in the last lecture and you already have the gold standard pass in your training data and you have some other information like john and mary announce and saw is a verb and you also given your features and you are told that initialize your weights to 5 except that for left arc the weights are 5.5 define your feature vector and the initial weight vector so let us try to do this so how many conditions are we seeing we are seeing three conditions over my configuration the stack is empty top of stack is noun and top of buffer is verb top of stack is verb and top of buffer is noun three conditions now these three conditions have to check for all the four different transitions so how many uh, what is the size of my feature vector 3 into 4 12 so my feature vector so it's of 12 dimension and what are my features so first feature let me write it simply condition 1 that is the stack is empty and so i am starting with left arc transition is left arc second feature can be condition 2 and left arc third condition 3 and left arc yes this is my fct a condition over the configuration and transition first three elements next three elements same c1 but now transition will change still right arc c2 right arc c3 right arc and then the next elements c1 reduce c2 reduce c3 reduce and here c1 shift c2 shift c3 shift so this is my feature vector 12 elements here now what is my weight vector initial weight vector we said all the elements are zero sorry are 5 except the left arc has 5.5 so the weights are 5.5 5.5 5.5 and everything else is 5.0 5.0 so that is your initial weight vector and your task is now so this was the first question what is my dependency pass john so mary so so is here john and mary this is subject and this is object now let us see what what the question says further so the next question the question says use this gold standard to pass during online learning and report the weights after completing one full iteration of r giga passing so it says that now you have to learn the weights using the r giga passing or the transition passing that we have seen so okay so now let let us see how do we learn the weights so So this is what we have defined right now. We have these features, we have these weights initially. That's why dependency pass. So how will I start learning? In learning, I'll take the sentence. I'll put it to the initial configuration. Initial configuration is what? Stack is empty. Buffer contains John, saw, and Mary, and arcs is empty. So now, 
at this configuration C, I have to choose what is the optimal transition as per my classifier and I have to choose the optimal transition as per my oracle. From oracle what will be T0? Oracle I will be very easily saying that this will be shift, I am doing a shift at this point, I should shift here, but what is being predicted by my classifier. So, let us see what will be T star as per my classifier. So, for my classifier how do I obtain T star? So, T star would be arg max w times f c t for all possible transitions. So, let us do one by one. So, what will be f c l a? What is the feature vector when the transition is l a? So, for that let us look at my feature vector definition. So, this will be a binary value at each point c 1 and l a. What is c 1? Top of stack is the stack is empty. So, c 1 is 1 and transition is left on. So, this will be 1. c 2 top of stack is noun and top of buffer is verb. Now, top of stack is empty it cannot contain a noun. So, c 2 is 0. So, already this will be 0. c 3 again says top of stack is verb and top of buffer is noun. Again this will be 0. Okay. That is why I fill in my my feature vector. Now, let us go to this. Now, immediately as you move to some other transition R a this should be 0 yes because here your transition is L a. So, everything else will be 0 12 Okay. Now, what is your weight vector? Weight vector is here. So, if you multiply weight vector with F c L a what do you get? So, w times f c l a is equal to what? So, only one element is 1. So, you multiply with that this will give you 5.5. Okay. Now, similarly now you can easily figure out what are the other features f c r a. For r a similarly only this element will be 1 everything else will be 0. So, what is w times f c r a that will be 5 and similarly if you keep on doing for all shift and reduce you will find this for shift is 5 and this for reduce is 5 yes. So, now what is your t star r max t w times f c t. So, this will be left arc and what is your t 0 optimal h shift as per your oracle and how do you learn your weights? If t star is not the same as t 0 you will update your weights and what is the abbreviate update? w plus f c t 0 minus f c t star. So, what is f c t 0? That is f c s h. So, what will be this function? So, suppose so s h what at, at the end. So, it was 1 0 0 and everything else is 0 and this is my l a. So, what will be the new weight vector? So, I have the original weight vector that is this one plus this minus this. So, what will be the new weight vector? It will be I am I am subtracting one here. So, 4 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0. And now I have come to shift. In shift, I am adding that one. So, it will be 6.0, 5.0, 5.0. And that is your new weight vector. Okay. And now you will work with this weight vector for the next set of con configuration. So, what will be the next configuration? From here, 
you will apply shift and next configuration will be john summary and file again you will convert it to the feature vector see what are the what is t star that you are getting what is t 0 if they are not matching update your weights and that you will continue until you arrive at the terminal configuration and then you will have the final weight vectors. So, I will uh, encourage all of you that you should try it this full example on your own and see what is the final weight vector that you are uh, getting and even here try to see that by using this weight vector does that help in that now with the new weight vector if you try it on the old configuration you will actually attain the you will you will be closer to the optimal con configuration as per the oracle and not what your classifier was earlier predicting. So, so this is the idea of how you can use the machine machine learning methods for this dependency parsing by taking this example of R key equal to transition based parsing. Now, in the next lecture we will we will start discussion on a new method of dependency parsing and we will see that again how we can use the label data for, for doing this.